So hi everyone uh, and welcome to this video on introducing the model selection criteria. So in time series, we can choose from a couple of models and choosing the best model okay, is not necessarily something that's straightforward. We need to consider certain trade-offs and certain characteristics for some given conditions. But fortunately for us, there are a couple of criterion that can help guide our approach in selecting which model to use. So we can refer to the significance of the coefficients, uh, strike a balance between fit and parsimony, ensuring the white noise, uh, the residuals are white noise, and of course its ability to forecast and to account for structural breaks. For this particular video, we're going to focus on the information criteria which allow us to uh, compare different models based on the values of their respective information criteria. And in particular, we're going to focus on three, which is the Akaike Information Criterion, or AIC, the Schwarz-Bayesian Information Criterion, which is SBIC, and the Hannan quinn Information Criterion, which is HQIC. Now, as I said earlier, okay, one main consideration for us is fit versus parsimony okay fit versus parsimony and uh, the first aspect okay fit okay is essentially how well your model explains the variation in y so how well model explains the variation in y in y okay and or your forecast variable in such a way that you can use it to be able to forecast its future values okay now one way forecasters have done this in the past is to just throw everything into the model that is if we want to forecast yt using some ar model then we use all the lags of yt we have or that we can possibly use and this is because as we know okay if we increase k, if we increase the number of regressors, say k, so this is number of regressors, regressors, then in general, okay, in general, the r squared, which is a goodness of fit measure, will also increase, because that goodness of fit measure is generally increasing with the number of regressors. However, we do note that merely increasing the number of regressors is prone to many biases. For one, including lags that are irrelevant would have disastrous consequences come forecasting. As such, it's of paramount importance to determine the most appropriate lag length to use. And this beggars the question, how many lags will we include? And essentially, we want to include the lags that explain the variation in Y but don't include all such that the parsimony of the model is uh, compromised. And parsimony is the simplicity of the model. Simplicity. So it means only including what's essential, not including the non-essentials and things that could, um, that could distract or that could uh, uh, make erroneous biases to our errors. So we have three information criteria, which if we run a model, they will have a, a specific value for each of these three criteria. And let's break down each. So the most typically used is the Akaike Information Criteria, or the AIC for short. And at first glance, okay, if you look at the formula for the AIC, it might look fairly awkward, but it's actually fairly intuitive. Now, this first part here, notice, we have ln RSS. If you recall from basic econometrics, the residual sum of squares, which is RSS, is the proportion of the variation okay, that is not explained, that is not explained by the regressors. Okay? If the fit of the model is better, so if fit of the model, if fit is better, what happens is that RSS typically goes down, right? It will go down because there's less of the model that you do not have in explained, okay? And thus, if the fit is better, if fit is better, okay, so if fit is better, 
this part here, okay, will generally decrease, right? That part there will generally de decrease. And we call this one, okay, the fit penalty, okay? So if the fit of the model increases, this part here should decrease. Now, again, it's a trade-off between fit and parsimony, so we need to have something for parsimony. And it's the second term that we have here. So the second term pertains to the number of um, autoregressive lags used, that's P, the number of moving average lags used, that's Q, and some constant one. And what you'll notice is if you just increase the number of regressors to hypothetically increase the fit, what will happen is that this part here will increase because you've increased the number of flags that you use, which will increase uh, this penalty term here, which will increase the value of the AIC. And this term here, okay, we call it our parsimony penalty. Parsimony penalty. Now, the model which in theory is the best for us is the value in which the information criteria is lowest. So we are looking, okay, looking for lowest value okay, of each IC. Okay, which model okay, will give you the lowest value of each information criterion? Okay. Now the AI the AIC is not the only information criteria out there. There's also the SBIC and the HQIC. So if you look at the SBIC, okay, the fit penalty is the same. So this is your fit penalty. But uh, you'll notice that the parsimony penalty is uh, scaled higher by L and T. So in general, um, the SBIC penalizes uh, models that use more lag. So you'll have to note that. Then if you notice uh, this one, it's some, the HQIC, it's somewhere, um, it's somewhere in between, okay? This is somewhere in between the AIC and the SBIC. And uh, the penalty of the SBIC and the HQIC is relatively more anchored, okay, on the parsimony part rather than the fit part. The AIC kind of balances it out. So... Again, as I've said in summary, okay, uh, to determine supposedly what is the most uh, adequate lag length model for us, we need to look at the information criteria with the lowest value. And the information criteria that we are using is some mathematical representation of the trade-off between fit and parsimony. And thank you for your attention.